welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to thereasonswesmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 535. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today, we're welcoming comedian, actor, writer, Guy Tori to the show. Beware. He's coming. Guy Tori is tantalizing, tantalizing, and tripolar. We got to learn how to take care of money, black folks. We really do, man, because white folks got that down, man. We got to have new stuff all the time. White people don't care how they look. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. They don't care how they look. Guy Tory, uncut, uncensored, and unplugged. The. You've seen him on Death Comedy Jam, Movie Life, the movie American History X, The Animal, Pearl Harbor, on Jay Leno, on Jimmy Kimmel, Ruby Slow Burn. Coming to town, it's the Guy Tory Comedy Show. We gotta have new tennis shoes all the time. Gotta have some new white sneaks. White people don't care about tennis shoes. They wear Reeboks until they fall apart. They wear Reeboks until the R A E E B fall off. Shoes just say okay. Guy Tory. I said it. But I know my limitations. I ain't that cute. I'm somewhere in between Denzel and Flavor Flav. It's the Guy Tory Comedy Show. The Guy Tory Tripolar Comedy Tour. It's unexplained behavior. Beware. Hang on to your hat. It's going to be a wild ride. He's a funny dude. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and please go to my office Facebook page and like us. That would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Also, if you're a dentist with at least three years' experience, I'm looking for an associate, so please call me or send me an email, 614-262-9588 or bkavitko at AOL.com. All right, now we're going to remind you that in about 12 minutes, we're going to be giving away free flowers to the winner of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. If you want to pre-program it into your phone, the number is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. You'll be able to call in and win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. As I mentioned, we have a great show for you today. We have with us on the phone Guy Tory. Many of you know that he's been in many movies. He's been on TV shows, a comedian. I guess most recently that's what you're doing. And so, hey, Guy, thanks so much for getting up early in the morning and being on my show. Oh, no problem, man. It's all good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm honored to have you on the show. It's really going to be fun. I'm, I think it's cool. And, uh, you know, the show's called The Reasons We Smile, and you make a lot of people smile. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> I, I think, I have, I think I'm, I'm balanced well. I think I make them smile. And, you know, with my edgy comedy, I think I'm, I feel groans in there, too. But at the end of the day, they smile. Oh, okay. So it makes some people cringe a little bit? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You know, if you're not making people cringe or, or, or think with your stand-up or with your art, then you're not really doing it. Okay. I was going to ask you, how do you get your inspiration for your comedy? You know, a lot of people, they bring in relatives into the scene or there's just some things happening when they were growing up. What about you? I mean, you know, it just comes from life experiences. I mean, it comes from, it could be my past, could be something that's currently going on in the country, in the world, or something going on in my life. I mean, a true comedian is one who is open and one who lets you in. The difference between a comic and a comedian, a comic says funny things, but a comedian makes things funny. So to be able to take certain situations and make them into part of their act and their culture, of, of in the culture of comedy, then that's what an artist is. And I, I've definitely graduated from being a comic to a comedian. And that's that's what the greats have done. I mean, they're able to, you're able to laugh at their pain. You're able to let yourself in like Richard Pryor, like Bill Cosby, like pre-pill Bill Cosby, that is. Right. <laughs> um, 
and uh, and and Martin Lawrence and Chris Rock and those guys. So opening up and letting people in is the true art form of stand up. So okay, you're talking about things that happened to you in your life. Did you ever have groceries on layaway? Hey man, yeah man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I did a show called Hollywood Unsung, which is on TV One. They did a bio basically on my brother and I, Joe Torrey. Uh huh. And we were broke, man, and we grew up poor. And there's one Thanksgiving we didn't have a turkey, so we were gonna eat a pigeon. <laughs> I try to catch a pigeon, man, for Thanksgiving because my mom and dad split up for a minute. They ended up getting back together, but during those times, it was rough, and we grew up in St. Louis, man, and Thanksgiving came. We won the bird. My mom grew up in the South, and she, we always heard the stories about her. You know, they ate pigeons down South, but this is St. Louis now. Uh -huh. like, we forget, they, they, you can't eat city pigeons. <laughs> But we didn't know, but we were watching, you know, we were big fans of cartoons, watching Wildy Coyote trying to catch the Roadrunner. You know, he took a, a box and a stick and a string. And right. Hit in the bushes and put some breadcrumbs leading up to the box, and he pulled the stick and the box fell on the bird. Well, we did that. <laughs> we only got one pigeon. Did you eat it? So we were going to eat it, but then at the last moment, the church came through with a turkey. Oh. And we let the pigeon go. <laughs> the pigeon didn't get to live. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's, that's, I think that's worse than having groceries on layaway. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, okay, so you mentioned how you love your job because of all the applause, you know? So you walk on stage, people applaud, right? Yeah, man. That's, you know, that's, that's a high by itself, man. I mean, just, just the fact that, the fact that everybody shows up, I still don't get used to or take for granted audiences, man. You mean, like you put your name on a marquee or on a ticket or online and people actually take time out of their day to come share your stories and laugh at your pain. So I, I love that. Yeah, no, I think it'd be really neat if after I finished the root canal, people started to clap. <laughs> <laughs> what? I have veneers. I have veneers. I'm sorry. I have oh, cool. A terrible grill. If you see my, my mouth in American History X, you'll see the horrible dinner work that I had. But I'm going to tell you, once I got my teeth fixed, it changed my life. Like, like my confidence went through the roof. I was smiling more. Women were complimenting me on my smile, and my dimples showed more. And it just, I started booking more movie roles and things like that. So that is very important, man. I always get compliments on my smile as well. But, you know, when I didn't have those veneers and I didn't have the dental work done, it, it was a lot of less smiles coming from me. Yeah, you know, I really feel like what I do every day is change lives when you can do that for a person. Yeah, man. Okay, so what's your thoughts about going to the dentist besides your veneers? You know what's funny, man? I have a, and this is probably not good for you, but I have a fear going to the dentist. <laughs> no. I know it's a necessary thing. <laughs> I would have expected you to say why. that. Why? I was traumatized as a little kid. That's the common story I hear. I was 13 years old, uh -huh. went to the dentist, and I needed full filling. Okay. In walks the woman of my dreams. Like this woman was, this dentist was beautiful. Honey blonde hair, mocha skin. The cleavage is now long as the now river. <laughs> and I was like, wow. I mean, at 13, they're like I had a shot, right? Right. <laughs> so she says, she looks in my mouth, does the x-ray. She's like, oh, you need four fillings. She said, we're going to do two this month and come back next month and get the other two done. She said, uh, you know, you're a big boy. We usually numb you, but we're not going to numb you. You're just going to feel a little tingle in your mouth. <laughs> Why would she say that? I, I don't know. No, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to be a man. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a man. I don't need no, I don't need any Novocaine. You ain't got to numb me. She got the drill in my mouth. When I tell you the tears that came out of my mouth, my nose, my ears, and other places in right. my body, when I tell you that, the, I, I could have dug a hole in my shoes with my toes cringing. It was horrible, horrible. And I was mad. So then the next month, I come back for the next two. I'm like, forget that. I'm, I want I want the shot this time. Right. I'm going to tell her I want the shot. But this time they have a different dentist. Hygienist. She, I mean, well, she, she comes in, and she's like a Russian shot putter. Like, she's not... <laughs> She built terrible, right? Right. So she says, I was getting ready to tell her, hey, I want the shot. But in walks the, the dentist from last month. Oh, boy. The, the good-looking one. And before I can say anything, she's like, oh, I remember him from last month. He's a big boy. He don't, he don't eat anything. Oh, my goodness. And then she just stuck the drill in my mouth or whatever it was. It felt like a jackhammer. Like you see those construction men right. digging up uh, on the street. That's what it felt like in my mouth, man. So ever since then, even though I, I go to the dentist, but I have a little bit of fear when I go because of my childhood. Well, I can imagine. And, you know, I, I always encourage other dentists who listen, don't do that. I mean, let's yeah. take really good care of kids so they don't grow up to be those afraid adults, right? Yeah. Wow. No, I'm sorry to hear that, but <laughs> I, I, I don't do that. And it's funny. I was going to ask you if you had any funny dental stories, but that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, but, you know, but at the end of the day, what I learned from it was a song by Belle Bib DeVoe. Never trust a big button to smile. Because <laughs> I was blinded by her beauty. That's right. And her booty. She had a nice little <laughs> booty on her. She, like she, had, so she had two honey-baked hams in her back pocket. <laughs>
Man, you were checking her out from that dental chair. Oh, yeah, man. But, but <laughs> after that, I was done. I was like, that, that, I learned a lesson that you can't trust beautiful women all the time. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, now, how'd you take on the name Guy? How'd you decide on Guy? Guy's my middle name. I'm married oh. to my dad. Her name is Robert Guy Tory. I go by Guy because I hated Rob. I hated Guy in the beginning, to be honest. Okay. And I went by Tory in college. Everybody called me by my last name, Tory. Right. But in the late 80s, there's a singing group, R&B group, came out called Guy. All right. Teddy Riley, Aaron Hall, Damian Hall. And the women loved that group. And I was like, that's my middle name. <laughs> oh. So I started kind of using Guy in college because the ladies, again, you know, doing stuff for the ladies. That's right. The ladies loved it. And I went by, so I went by Guy. So you didn't learn your lesson in the dental chair. I didn't, man. You know, women, you know, <laughs> the women have this magic, man. They just have this magical thing. God knew what he was doing when he created the beautiful species of the female. <laughs> I agree. Hey, are you a military brat? I am an army brat. Yeah, man. My dad was military 23 years, two tours in Vietnam. He kind of raised us military, to be honest. Did he? We were very disciplined because of that. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Chores typed up, laminated, mounted on the wall, and had to make our beds. And he'd come by with a quarter. If it didn't bounce, had to remake your bed. Saturday's inspection, you had to come stand by your bed, and he'd come with a white glove, and he'd check the room and stuff for dust. Yeah, he was, yeah, his dad was no joke. Oh, right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I noticed you went to Southeast Missouri State University, same place uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer went. And just by coincidence, my son-in-law actually is a professor at Western Missouri State. Oh, really? Yeah, I guess the other side of the state, huh? Yeah, yeah. Southeast Missouri State, man, was only an hour and a half, maybe two hours outside of St. Louis. And okay. I went there. And that's when I kind of like became, I was always like a class clown, campus clown. I mean, right. a school bus clown. <laughs> I went to college, I became the, the campus clown. Uh, at lunchtime, I would always hold like these comedy shows. Not that I knew I was a comedian. But I always just played a dozen rank, you know, mama joke. At the same time, every day in the student union. So people got wind of that. And like every day around that time, people would come and gather around and just hear me rank on people. Just <laughs> brag on people and go in on people. And it became what I guess can say my, some of my earliest comedy shows. I wasn't a comedian. I didn't even know doing comedy was a job, to be honest. <laughs> So, okay, I like the one where you were talking about how white people don't care about their tennis shoes. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> the old school Wait until the R and the, the... Black people, it's, it's like, I tell them, it's not how much money you make, it's how much you keep. And we got it, we just love tennis shoes. It's like, yo, you know, what white basketball player has an NBA shoe? I have no idea. I can't name one. Larry Bird was like the only one. Okay. But, it, but but no one, no other white kid had had a had a shoe name after him. So we care about shoes. I guess it comes from Africa when there was a time we didn't have shoes. So yeah, we take advantage of uh, fashion now. Okay. <laughs> Hey, now, I just want to make sure my audience knows that, let's see, you've been in a lot of movies. You've been in Runaway Jury. You've been in Pearl Harbor, Funny Money, Flirt, Dead and Deader, The Animal with Rob Schreiner, American History X, which we're going to talk about here soon. The fact that uh, it is Black History Month, April. And we want to talk a little bit about that. By the way, that's very powerful, and I want to tell you a little story about it. And then also you've been in the TV appearances, Last Comic Standing, NFL Total Access, Blind Justice, The Shield, NYPD Blue, X-Files, oh my goodness, The Strip, Good News, Sparks, goes on and on. And you've been on Jay Leno, and you've been on uh, Craig Ferguson, and uh, yeah, Jimmy Comic Kimmel. Yeah, Comic was the start, yeah, the HBO, and yeah, man. Well, so you've been pretty successful at being a comic and a comedian. Hey, man, it pays the bills. We live in Southern California in Los Angeles, man. You better make some money. You better do something right. <laughs> I know, because it's so expensive to live out there, right? Because you would have groceries on layaway. <laughs> I've never heard anybody talk about groceries on layaway. Hey, man, you, you don't shop at Whole Foods, then. Because <laughs> it's so expensive, you need to put it in layaway, right? Hey, exactly. Although now that Amazon bought them, that's changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're supposed to lower the prices. <laughs> Not sure if they have, but uh, they're supposed to. All right, so let's see here. Okay, now we always do a Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to that. If you've been listening to the show, you're going to know the answer to my question. Let me give you the number ahead of time. It's 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. But before we do that, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final.
And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and the question of the day is, my guest today is Guy Tory. Which of the following describes some facts about him? A, getting porcelain veneers changed his life for the better. B, he has appeared in many movies such as American History X, Pearl Harbor, Runaway Jury, and more. C, he has appeared in several TV shows such as Last Comic Standing, The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, NYPD Blue, and more. Or D, all of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. But don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. And now we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. We're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. During the break, my producer took the phone calls. Tell me who is the winner of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Who had the correct answer, which is D, all of the above. The winner this morning is Donna from Worthington. Congratulations to our winner. Enjoy those flowers from DeSantis. And thank you for calling. And those of you that didn't win, please call next week. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 535 of The Reasons We Smile. And we are talking with Guy Tory. He is an actor, he's a writer, he's a comedian, he's a dental patient, he has porcelain veneers, and he's just an all-around good guy. Exactamundo. <laughs> so, we talked about American History X. It's one of the yeah. movies you're most known for. And, and yet, it's from 1998. You were about, what, 28 years old when you did it? <laughs> Yeah, about 28, I would say that. Okay, so that's a pretty powerful movie, and you had quite a big part, and I uh, congratulate you, by the way. You did a great job. Thank you. My wife and I watched it together. She didn't want to watch it at the beginning because she doesn't like movies that are heavy-hitting, you know, hard-hitting. Right. And I said, you know what? Why don't you just stay and watch? got to tell you, and people listening, you guys need to watch this movie. She was in tears at the end. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, she couldn't really talk. And she did want me to tell you that you were her favorite character in the movie. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, and that's the honest truth. That, that, was, that movie meant a lot to me as far as my career. Uh, it really kind of opened um, Hollywood white eyes up to me being um, a dramatic actor. Right. And, and you know, it's, it's hard for comedians to be taken seriously a lot. Even though we, if we take our comedy egos out of the way and tap into the dark side, because all comedians are dark and twisted on the inside. If we tap into that, we make some very great, great dramatic actors. But a lot of, a lot of us can't, you know, can't chill that comedy ego sometimes. But that movie just meant so much in terms of uh, where, how I got the role. I got the role because I was seen at a comedy night that I created uh, for that reason, to showcase black comedians in Los Angeles because the industry was not going to the black neighborhoods seeing black talent. So I brought 
the hood to Hollywood and started this comedy night. And so many comedians, black comedians, were either discovered or got deals or booked roles or agents or managers by being seen in that comedy night. And that role in American Street X was a, a direct result of being in that room and being seen at that time and going on. So I, I, I have a lot of love and respect for the, what that movie not only meant to me, but what it meant to society and how... Unfortunately, that movie still stands oh, today, unfortunately. I know. I was going to say, don't you think the movie was almost a little bit ahead of its time? Yeah, yeah. When I'm watching yeah. this movie from 98, and I'm going, oh my goodness, this is really sad because this stuff is still happening today. Sad. Right? Yeah, yeah. Powerful film, man. And There's not a week that goes by that I run into someone who has seen that movie. I run into students who have stopped me and said, hey, well, I, do, I did a thesis on your movie, or wow. I study your movie in class. I get law enforcement people who say they study that movie in class. I even got some of the former Lakers <laughs> that tell me that Phil Jackson used that film in game study. Really? And it helped them beat the Sacramento Kings and, uh, and you know, back in the day when Shaq and Kobe was having those those West Coast battles with Chris Webber and, and uh, Jason Williams and Vladi Divac and those guys, man, because Jason Williams at the time, the, he's a you know white basketball player with a bald head, shaved head, looked like Ed Norton. And then, <laughs> in the movie. The man who... <laughs> who was the coach, had that little mustache, looked like Hitler. Oh, wow, so, yeah. Uh, some of the players told me that Phil Jackson would, would, would have Jason Williams coming down the court, and he'd cut to a scene of, of Ed Norton and American Street and then he'd have a, uh, Edelman on the sidelines, strolling the sidelines, and then he'd cut to a picture of Hitler. Oh. And then the players said when they took the field, all they could think of those scenes, and they wanted to destroy the Sacramento Kings. Oh, and it worked. Oh, it worked. Oh, yeah, yeah, it could help, us, help, help us get uh, five rings. Wow. We do have to go to a break here. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kubitko, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 535. With us on the phone is Guy Tori. Pretty interesting guy, pretty interesting guest, really funny comedian. And if you get a chance to see him, you should go. And oh, yeah. It's like this stuff just comes out of you. You don't, Do you have to try out material or it just materializes always, in your head? We're always teasing out material. You never want to just, I mean, of course, we, we are the experts. But at the same time, you still have to see what works, how it flows, where to put stuff and stuff like that. It's funny, I was just watching, just seeing Martin Lawrence back on stage who's hosting a tour right now. And it's just comedy is infectious because it's great seeing him back on stage. Uh, he's one of the reasons why I, I'm doing comedy between him and my brother Joe Torre. They inspired me. And then, you know, watching him and then having a couple of notes for him and he being receptive to those notes. Like, man, it was funny because I'm just a fan of stand-up. Right. So, you know, when you're a fan of stand-up, you want to see everybody win in stand-up. It's not just, you know, it can be a very selfish and self-centered career or job. But when you're a fan of the art and you're a fan of certain people, you want to see them do well and help them in any way you can. So not that Martin needs my help. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I'm like, sure he appreciates I, it, you know, though. Everybody 
everybody has two heads are better than one, like they always say. And it's right. a treat to watch them back on stage, having fun and being silly. That's awesome. Hey, I just want to go back to the movie a little bit, and it's called our American History X. Right. And if you can find it, I think, actually, to be honest, I got it on Amazon Prime Video, so you can still get it. It's like $3 for non-HD, $4 for HD. So anybody listening should go and do that. So basically, a couple things about the movie. One is, is you guys use the N-word a lot, and I'm wondering how, was that hard for the white actors to be able to do that? Well, it's funny because they <laughs> I do a joke about how I was the only black on set a lot of days. Oh, okay. They had no blacks on the crew. Really? Uh, I was the only black actor in, in, on a lot of those days that I shot, and I do a, and they had real skinheads in the movie. Like, the director from oh. the UK wanted authentic skinheads, so they bust like, I don't know, I think, I think I think I went to a corn concert and bust in like 300 skinheads in Orange County, California. Went to a huge skinhead population, and <laughs> and, and they were, they couldn't wait to say the word. They were warming up. Really? Like, they wanted to rehearse. Like, man, you got one word, you want to rehearse? Damn. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, wow. Some days, a lot of scary days on that movie because of that. Wow. Okay, so let me just tell my listeners, the movie is about a Nazi skinhead who very much against black people and goes to prison. Black people, Jewish people, anybody that's not white. Okay, and goes to prison, and that's where your character meets him. Right. Now, the interesting thing in the movie, I don't know how much to give away here, but basically, and maybe I won't, but you played Lamont. and I he was Lamont, who's, who's in prison with Ed Norton, who plays the character uh, in that film, Derek. Yeah. And we kind of have a come-to-Jesus moment. Right. Yeah, it's the and, biggest uh, part of the, the movie. You have to look at the movie and see, but I will well, warn you, it's very graphic. Right. In language and in some of the scenes. So right. So you have little kids. It's not a movie. You want to invite the family over and you kids and get popcorn and bonbons. Exactly. Right. But you should watch it, movie. maybe save it till the, when the kids are old enough, have them watch it. And it's right. uh, very, very powerful. It's just too bad. I think the reason my wife was in tears is because there's just so much hate in the world and it's not, we don't need yeah. it. We just need to get, stop it, right? Stop I hating did a each show other. I in Dayton, Ohio, and after the show, a white guy comes up to me and he's like teary eyed and he's like, man, thank you for American Shrek. He said, you, you saved my life. And I was like, well, he said, I was a skinhead. Ooh. And he said, after watching that movie, I said, he said he was headed down the wrong path. And after watching that movie, he woke up. Wow. And he said that he, he saw what he was doing was wrong and stupid. And he said, you know, that the cat, my character in that movie changed his mind and changed his life. And that was touching, very moving, very touching um, for someone to be that vulnerable and, and let me know that and share that with me. So, yeah, you know, it, it just it, it keeps me... Uh, Motivated? Be conscious of the roles that I do take. Okay. And when I'm doing a role, to really, really do the role honestly and do, and do that role justice and not just read lines, but really give the depth to the character that, that it needs. And you, like, you, you, you know, you could help somebody. Right, right. Yeah, what an awesome opportunity. You did an awesome job. And Thank you. And I want to congratulate you on all that you do. I know you do a lot of charity work and... Man, you're all over the place. So, uh, <laughs> hey, maybe we can do this again sometime. I'm out of time, but uh, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. So, Guy, before we go, tell me, if somebody wants to reach out to you, find out where your next gig is or something like that, how do they find that out? Absolutely. Social media, man. I'm always online posting every show that I do, at Guy Tory, G-U-Y-T-O-R-R-Y, on Facebook, The Guy Tory Show, and on Twitter, at Guy Tory, G-U-Y-T-O-R-R-Y. And I have some podcasts I'd love for you to all to listen to, as well as Dr. K's. Unstable podcast, unstable with props VD. Of course, it's spelled wrong because we're unstable. <laughs> and Third Degree Radio on Dash Radio. There's an app for it. Dash Radio, Third Degree Radio. And every Monday and Wednesday, I'm on the Tom Jordan Morning Show, which is a syndicated, nationally syndicated radio show. Uh, the, the legendary Tom Jordan. So please catch me every Monday and Wednesday on the Tom Jordan Morning Show. On the Tom Joyner Show. All right. Awesome. Very, very cool. Very cool guy. And thank you so much for being on my show. Really do appreciate it. And like I said, maybe we can do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, doctor. You are very welcome. You have a great day, and we'll be tuning in. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. That's all the time we have. Let me remind you again, if you're a dentist with three years' experience at least, I'm looking for an associate, so please give me a call, 614-262-9588, or send an email to bkvitko at aol.com. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Dr. Kavitko and visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye.
This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to thereasonswesmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 262 9588 or send an email to speaking at the reasons we smile